Hey, good evening, YouTube. It's uh, Thunder Dan back at it again, guys. I don't know if you notice or not, I'm inside. It's uh, Tuesday, and unfortunately, when I get done work at 5 o'clock, it's pitch black dark, so I can't fish because I can't see, obviously. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and make a video today, and I'm going to go back a couple days as to what happened as to why I'm here right now inside. But I'm hoping that the month of November has been a good month for you guys. Because for November here in Delaware, it's been absolutely weird. 60, 70, even an 80 degree day in November. That's absolutely insane here in this state. But Mother Nature, she just came by last Friday. She slapped us right in the face and woke us up to the reality of the fact that you are in the first state of Delaware and it gets cold. 30 something degrees on Friday and the wind was blustery and I mean bone cold. And I just said, no way am I going outside. So I stayed in. But I decided to go out on Saturday. So I had a whole bunch of errands, I had to take care of my kids and I, in my mind I knew I was gonna go out and fish for real quick. And uh, in my haste, I ran out with my rods, my ultralights, and I was gonna decide to go white perch fishing. So of course when I go to where I'm going, which is the St. Jones in Dover, not thinking to myself, when I finally get there, before I get there, I'm like, oh man, I totally forgot to look at the tidal charts to see if it was low tide or high tide, because it makes a huge difference when it comes to these perch. When I walk out there, of course, it's low tide. So anyway, I threw a couple casts, got snagged up, and I'm like, you know what, enough of this. So. I decided right at that point in time, I had the right things in my hands and I was going to go ahead and make another video since I wasn't going to be able to create a fishing video. And uh, I really don't like this word, but it has two other words that I like. And I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and use the bad word, the two words that I like. So, hack. I don't like using the word hack, but I guess you could say a tip, but fishing and photography. Two of my favorite hobbies that I like. Fishing photography hack, guys. I have a cheap and inexpensive way for you bank fishermen. Uh, I don't know if uh, the people on the boats can kind of manipulate this hack in a different way, but it's primarily for those bank fishermen who have a tough time taking pictures of their fish. I don't know if you've been in this instance. I'm sure you have, and you don't have any friends around, and it's just you, and you got to hold your hand nine miles up in the air to try to get a decent shot of your fish that you caught and then you're trying to fumble with the the clicker on the phone and everything else to try to get it to go and of course you're missing and you're dropping your phone and doing whatever it is that you're trying to do just to get the picture of the excellent fish or whatever species of fish you might have caught that just uh, struck your interest and you wanted to, to keep it for your own sake and put it on Facebook or whatever the case may be. So anyway, the idea struck me uh, some time back. I've been using this for quite a number of years, and uh, I don't know if anybody else is using it or not, but I figure I'd like to share it with you because uh, I, I think it'll be beneficial to some of you guys. So if you go to the bait store, I know you guys always see this one piece sitting around. It's on every counter in the store. It's on the shelves of whatever store you go to, little mom and pop bait shops and whatnot. But when Oki and I always went carp and catfishing all the time, we used this one cheap little piece so we didn't have to have our arms being worn out because you know you have to wait for the, the, the fishing rod to bounce for whatever fish is uh, hitting on the end of your line. And you know that can take forever for carp and catfishing. So this, two, maybe three dollar piece. This is the fishing rod holder. Guys, this is a very indispensable piece. I'm telling you right now, go out and buy one of these and throw it in your box if you're a, a bank fisherman. It's going to be beneficial to you because I'm going to show you a piece that most people throw in their drawers or they throw away. But it's going to be the most important tool that you have as a bank fisherman because it's going to make your life so much easier. And guess what? It's hands free. Who doesn't want to take pictures hands free? A bank fisherman. I do, and I'm sure you do. So I'm gonna show you, but before I do that, I'm gonna chime on and I'm gonna throw a little diatribe because it drives me nuts when people do this. When they buy 
their phones, five, six, seven, almost a thousand dollars. They have their cell phones and not one person puts the cover on the phone. You guys are out of the elements all the time. Put a cover on it so it protects it. And that way when you drop it, it doesn't damage it. You got the covering that protects it because your fish is slimy and whatnot. This is, so, like I said, OtterBox. That's what I use all the time. I'm not trying to endorse the product, but I've used it for years and I'm an old coot. So I've had almost every phone that I've had uh, to make sure that my item is protected because it's an investment. You, you want to make sure your uh, phone lasts for a long time. But anyway, off of that, the piece that most people throw away when they buy these covers or put in a drawer is what you should put in your tackle box. And again, albeit you're spending a bunch of money on the cover and everything else to get it, you might find some off-market ones that might be a little bit cheaper, so you just have to look around. But this is just what I use because of the covers that I use all the time. But the most important part that most people throw away for a fisherman is this. Yeah, <laughs> that's the belt clip holder. And this right here will save your life. You can actually do two things with this thing. You can shoot in horizontal and you can shoot in vertical. Hands free. Who doesn't want to do that as I said earlier? All of us do. Because you want to save your energy for casting. You're trying to catch fish. But the important thing about this is it does both angles. If you notice the clip right here, it's very easy to manipulate. If you squeeze on it really easily, it's good. But the spring is pretty tough. So it's pretty firm when it uh, hangs onto this piece right here. So when you spring it open, you just put the clip right here onto your uh, fishing rod holder. And you want to turn it around. You have an instant monopod, guys, and your camera can literally sit right in this base right here. Now, my normal phone, which is the Note 8 that I use, uh, my one I use for my uh, photography, will fit in this clip. But sometimes, if you have these clips that are way larger than what the phone is that you have that you're using, like my Note 5 that's sitting right here that I'm using to videotape this, it's smaller than this base. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's a, one more cheap thing that you can buy. And you're probably gonna people are gonna probably look at you crazy if you're a dude walking in here and wondering why. Well, what are you buying those for? Ponytail holders. So if you notice, there's one right here and one right here. This will keep your phone in the base. And what's good about this piece right here is if you look right here on top, it's straight and smooth. But on the bottom right here, somebody had the bright idea to put that little hook that's right there. So if you put your phone behind these uh, ponytail holders and sit it right in that groove, that small phone is not going to go anywhere. This prevents it from leaning down this way. This prevents it from falling down to the ground through the hole itself. And I'm telling you, I've done this. It does. It's very sturdy if you got the OtterBox. Like I said, if you have any other ones, just test it out to make sure it's okay. But I'm telling you, this is going to go ahead and make your life so much easier. By putting your phone here, you stick it in the ground, and you telescope it. Now, the only drawback on this is you're not going to be able to stand up using this because it doesn't go that high. But it goes high enough so where you kneel down, you can get a nice high uh, kneel. You can kneel up and you can do a nice straight shot of yourself straight up and down. You don't hunch, have to hunch over or anything else like that. I promise you. I'm almost six foot tall and you will get a good shot because you're only getting from pretty much your waist up. So the bottom doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put this over here and explain to you a couple things on what you should do when you're out there and you're using this little cheap little hack. And it doesn't matter what ground you're on, you're going to find damp soft ground because you're near water. Winter, spring, summer, fall, whatever. Stick it in the ground and just put, make sure it's firm enough, maybe about that much into the ground if it allows it to go in there and it will stay. I've had my heaviest of phones on there and it does not rock. You may have to push it just forward a little back or back just move it like back and forth a little bit just to make sure that the pictures compose correctly. But once you got it all situated, now you want to compose your shot. But there's a couple things you want to do before you compose your shot. And that's and before you even leave the house too. Is on the Android and the iPhone, you have a feature. And on the iPhone, I think it's from the 6 on up. I don't know if it goes any earlier than that, but you'll just have to look into that. But I know on most of the Androids, I use it all the time. It's a very underutilized uh, function. But when you go to your camera and you type your little gear icon and you go to change your settings in the camera and everything else, there's a self-timer that's there. 
and I think it's pretty much the same exact way when you go to iPhone. But the only difference between the two is the Android has 2, 5, and 10 seconds. The iPhone has 3 and 10 seconds. Both of them, 10 seconds. Use 10 seconds. I will guarantee you you'll want to use that because that's an eternity to take a picture. Because when you push the button, you can move around, finagle, do any kind of face and everything else. And once you see it come down to 8, 9, and 10, now you're ready. Boom, picture's taken. And then you're good to go. Don't have to raise your hands. You don't have to fumble around looking for buttons or anything else like that. Because I'm going to tell you of another feature that you have, should have clicked on your phone. And in the same settings, I don't know if iPhone has it, but I know definitely Android has it. And I use it all the time to my advantage. Same thing. Icon in the camera. And when you open up your camera, hit the gear setting. Voice control. You can use smile, capture, take picture. I always say capture. When you say capture... It automatically takes the picture for you. You don't have to touch it at all. The only time you want to touch the phone is when you're composing yourself and you go to touch your face so it comes into focus. And then when you want to get your fish ready, just get your, your hand right here. Let the fish sit hanging like this. Don't put it like this yet if you're hitting a, hor a horizontal shot. And touch on the fish. Once it's in focus, you'll bring the fish back in the shot because, again, you're, you're all going to be in focus, but you want it on the closest thing nearest you, which is that fish. That's the main focus. So when you put the fish in the picture, you're going to bring the fish up there, and you're going to turn it into an angle right here. And then you're going to pop your head right into the triangle part that's open uh, on the back side of the tail there, whichever way you got your fish facing. And you're going to get these people saying, why do you got the fish close to there? You're making it big. You know what? Guess what? Because I can. It's my picture. I'm going to take it. I'm going to do it the way I want. The whole point of the matter is you want the picture to look good because I see this all the time, vertical and horizontal. If I go all the way back here, do you see all this empty space right here? That's useless space. When you go to crop the image right here, you're going to lose the image quality because it's just going to pixelate and it's going to look silly. So when you go close and you fill the frame of the fish and you use your head to fill that corner, it's going to crop so much easier in a horizontal, excuse me, a horizontal, one more time, horizontal, how I couldn't get that word out, I don't know, and vertical position. So if you look right here, this is one I took in a vertical shot. It looks pretty good. Didn't have to touch the phone at all. Self-timer. Same thing here with this horizontal shot. Beautiful shot. Self-timer. Voice control. It's easy as that, guys. Like I said, if iPhone users have that, please utilize that function. If you don't, all you got to do is just push the button. You still got 10 seconds to compose. Just be light about pushing on it so you don't rock the phone around or knock it out of this case or knock it out off of the uh, fishing holder, uh, pole holder there. But I'm hoping you guys can take this silly little hack, I think. But I don't know, like I said, if I was the first one doing it. But if I'm not, hey, I'm just passing along to other people and making things a little bit more better for you guys and making your photography that much more interesting. I'm not a pro photographer. Uh, photography is subjective, so you know nobody should be critiquing anybody else's photo. I'm, photos, that is. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit better for you guys. To, because some people worry about likes when it goes to photos. And this just makes it a little bit better because you, you make it a little more composed shot and people get to see exactly what they're looking at. One other thing I need to let you know, guys, and I see this common mistake all the time, besides using this particular hack, is how you're positioning yourself when you're taking the picture. If you have to lose the scenery behind your back, then do it because it's important. Always, always have the sun to your face. Never to your back because I see this almost 80% of the times where guys got great looking shots, they got it composed, but the sun is behind their head. And you always see this all in focus, saturated well, but this is black as sin because it's over or excuse me underexposed turn around to the sun if you got the scenery behind you perfect bonus if you don't hey the focus is the fish not the scenery behind you if you want to do that take scenics and go and put that along with your fishing picture that you have on your facebook or or your youtube video or whatever but anyway i'm going to get off that i'm hoping that this helps you out guys i hope you can use this hack I use it all the time. I've had no problems with it. I've broken no phones with it. And like I said, hands-free was the key on it. And that's the reason why I did it. So hopefully, you guys will gain back the blood in your arms. You'll continue to fish. And you get some great 
pictures of uh, awesome catches that you have. So I'm going to bid you guys adieu. Again, like, subscribe, push that notification bell, guys, and I really hope you enjoy everything that I'm doing. And again, I'm going to try to put a couple more videos up here, uh, crappy or uh, white perch, uh, before it gets super cold here because it's closing upon us. I mean, no, Thanksgiving's coming up, man, and I'm telling you, it's going to get cold. But I'm going to try, guys. So I'm going to throw a couple more videos up there and then maybe one more video of all the catches that I had. And uh, one last thing, uh, guys, this is my first year, so hopefully... Uh, next year, I can get way better in my videos, maybe have a little bit better lighting. Uh, we can go a little bit better places, a little more better equipment, but uh, fishing-wise, that is. And um, hopefully, uh, my uh, viewers raise up and everything. I'm, I'm quite happy with what, what me and Oki have already gotten already. I mean, we've got a decent amount of subscribers, lots of views, people reviewing it, commenting. Hey, we love it, man. So at the end here... Guys, if you do take pictures uh, using that particular hack, send me your pictures. Let me see what they look like. I'd be curious to see if it's improved your photography one bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will, but I know it has mine. So hopefully you saw the two pictures that I took earlier. But hey, guys, have a great day. Uh, I bid you adieu, and uh, fish on.